Every December, legions of volunteers fan out across North America, braving long hours in the cold to join the world's largest and longest running environmental science research project. It's called the Christmas Bird Count, and it attracts nearly 60,000 bird watchers focused on counting every individual bird in targeted areas throughout the United States and Canada. The count was started in 1900 by Frank Chapman, then a curator at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. He began in his own front yard by counting all the birds in Central Park. Guided by the National Audubon Society, that count has expanded to more than 2,500 locations, covering all kinds of terrain and habitat. What we're doing is we're, we're censusing birds during the very tail end of the fall migration. Um, it is the non-breeding season. And then over time, and that's the, the real beauty of, of the Christmas bird count, you can actually analyze decades with other decades through, uh, back at least through the 60s. There's nothing else that has the entire time span of over a century and also uh, the broad geographic scope that the Christmas bird count has. Volunteers come in all sizes. Henry got interested in birds how many years? How old were you? Four. Four years old. So this is a great way for us to be together and do something fun in the city. I have been doing the Christmas count about 15 years. And pretty much since I started becoming a Central Park bird watcher. It's exciting. I love it. The Christmas bird count really is a sort of the great granddaddy of citizen science projects. Um, it's getting um, the average birder and the average person in their yard involved in what's happening in conservation on a, lo on a local and hopefully then moving on to, to national and continental level. You're making a contribution uh, other than just uh, for your own pleasure uh, to help us understand uh, where the birds are when. You know, just seeing things on TV don't match to, uh, to seeing it in the wild. Or going to the zoo and seeing an eagle isn't the same thing as seeing an eagle fly over your head. I'm a captain in New York City Fire Department. I work in Harlem, and this is a good escape from, uh, from things I see and do down there. As night falls, birders gather together to compile the counts. I'm transferring everything from my uh, notebook here into the spreadsheet because at this time of the night, you expect me to add? <laughs> it's a long day. The nationwide data takes months to collect and organize, and is eventually made available to the scientific community through the internet. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, how are the birds doing? And it's, it's, um, it's, it's not an easy question. We certainly do see range shifting in birds as documented by the Christmas bird count. The real challenge is to correlate why the species are shifting their ranges and if that correlates with, with climate change. We want to make sure that we're still finding plenty of blue jays and robins and uh, goldfinches and chickadees. Uh, yes, we want to protect peregrine falcons and whooping cranes and such, but we also want to have the common birds that are common now, common for our grandchildren and, and many generations to come. For Assignment Earth, I'm Gary Stryker.